Hi, I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. I'm at the Philharmonic just outside of Prague. And I want to talk about the concert stage. I want to talk about the, the very finest pianos in the world. And the, uh, um, uh, it might be a little bit dramatic to call it the fight for the concert stage. And the effect that World War II specifically had on, uh, on, the, um, on the whole situation. So uh, from, from the 1790s all the way through uh, World War I and, and into World War II, the, uh, the very finest pianos in the world were, were created mainly in Germany. Um, you have uh, Blutner and Bosendorfer and Beckstein and, um, and you have Petroff, Steinway, Baldwin, all of these, all of these pianos and others that were, that were fighting for, the, for the, uh, the, the top position. And that's actually something that I also want to talk about. I don't, I don't know that I even necessarily believe in a top position. While, while each manufacturer would love for, for the, the public at large to believe that they have, that they are the preeminent top position holder, I don't believe that that position really exists. That rather it's a taste driven. Um, and that all of, these, all of these pianos have their own special colors and tones and, and they have different touch. Uh, but that's a that's a tangent. Uh, so let's let's take them one by one, and the effect that uh, the politics of World War II, global politics, had on on piano building. If you look at uh, Bosendorfer, for example, very fine piano out of out of Vienna. Uh, they were they were in Russian occupied Vienna, uh, and so for for ten years. Not until 1958 were they able to start emerging from the catastrophe that World War II was on, on them. Blutner, similar situation in, in Eastern Germany, forget about it. Petrov, same thing. They were, uh, they were in Prague and, and, uh, and uh, of course the, the Soviets had, had the same effect that, that they had on, on Blutner. Uh, Schimmel, it wasn't until the 1970s that they had the financial wherewithal among and, and, and then there, there are others as well. Uh, Fazioli didn't even come around until the 1970s. So you have all these fine, fine piano makers that, uh, that it really wasn't until the last 30 or so years that they were able to emerge. That leaves, uh, that leaves the United States as the, as the, uh, the, only, the only area in which, in which fine pianos were able to be built. You have pianos such as such as Chickering and, and Kanabi, Mason and Hamlin, very fine pianos, but uh, but globally they weren't quite there from a from a global marketing strategy. So that leaves that leaves Steinway and Baldwin. Um, of course, uh, of course these these are pianos that that were building fine piano uh, piano makers that were building fine pianos already for decades before World War II. But, uh, but where the United States was, was hardly touched during the war, um, their piano building capabilities were, um, essentially gave them a, a giant head start in front of all of these other European piano manufacturers that, that I was talking about a minute ago. So really, the, the top piano makers post-World War II were, were Steinway and Baldwin out of the United States. Um, and uh, Steinway, of course, had a, had a massive marketing machine. They've had Steinway Hall, and they've had a number of different strategies to, to, to place their pianos in, in concert halls and in practice rooms for, for uh, pianists to, uh, to grow accustomed to. And then Baldwin, uh, I, I rebuild Baldwins all the time that are from pre-World War II, that are from World War I era, and they're incredible pianos. They're right, they're right up there. But uh, they ran into hard times, and, and by the 19, uh, 1980s, or arguably even slightly earlier, they started to, to run into, run into uh, a little bit of trouble. But, uh, but here we are, now uh, 70, 80 years beyond that uh, um, catastrophic time for Europe. And now we have emerged all of these, uh, all of these different piano brands that uh, that are really up there on that top echelon of, of fine pianos, um, back up there, in spite of that uh, head start that uh, that the American brands were uh, were privileged to to have. <laughs>